Hello, so this is my collection of hotkeys and scripts for Blender and a free download link and installation instructions below. This is just a very quick breakdown. So before people start clicking away, let's just do something. So let's start with a curve and one of my favorite scripts, let's move it over here. All you have to do is just create any type of curve, make sure it's selected and then run a script called pipe. Here it is, edge to pipe. So once we run it, it will automatically add thickness to that curve and create a pipe. So moving the mouse will change the radius and then scrolling up and down will change the segments. And once you apply it, it'll go back to smooth shading. So we can adjust this at any time by just rerunning the same script. And I set it to be flat shading while you're editing it so that you can get a better sense of how many segments you're using because I still haven't implemented any uh, UI or anything. It's very, very bare bones. But the cool thing about the script is that it also works on geometry. So if we do something like this, and uh, we can run this script on these edge loops. So uh, let's do that. And it will convert them into curves for you. And we can do the same thing we did before. And once you're happy, we'll click. And these are curves, so we can edit them. Like this, I don't know. And once you're happy with them, just convert them to mesh. And then we can edit them as we would a regular mesh. And a personal favorite of mine is the Vitaly poke. So there's a lot of different ways of creating a diamond type pattern from our selections, but I just like using my script for it. So most of the hockeys I'm gonna press, by the way, are custom. So if you try to follow along with Blender's default, it's not gonna work. So Shift F to convert this to a, a linked coplanar. And then Shift scroll down to shrink or up to grow our selection. And a search for the Vitaly script. So it converts our selection into a diamond pattern. And other ways of doing this in Blender are actually super easy. Just right click, poke faces, and then right click triangles to quads. The reason I don't like doing that is because it only seems to work with meshes that were created in Blender. There are some times when I brought meshes that, uh, that were made in ZBrush and then uh, this method didn't work. My script, however, is surprisingly reliable and uh, i say surprisingly because i don't really code very well i hate coding anyway after we do this we can do what we usually do so i to inset and then i again to inset individual faces and uh, i don't know do something like this and then just press Control 3 to add three subdivision levels Rest on ground also makes a comeback. So if we have meshes of different sizes like this and we want them all to be lined up with a grid, we will just search for my script. Here it is, click on it, and there it is. I haven't tested this one with heavy meshes though, so uh, good luck. <laughs> we also have an auto smooth because by default, all of the faces in Blender are set to be uh, hard edges or flat shading. So we can set this to smooth shading and then activate the, the normals somewhere around here. Here it is. But for one object, this is very easy to do. But let's say if you have tons of uh, objects, then it becomes very tedious. So I just automated that with Control Shift E. And if you press it again, it will go back to flat shading. So uh, this is the equivalent of Maya's soft and hardened edge uh, based on uh, the angles of faces. In Blender, if you want to bevel, you need to press Control B, and that's how we bevel edges. But if you want to bevel a vertex, you can't use that same hockey. You need to press Control Shift B. So it's a completely separate tool with its own hockey. And in some situations, it's ideal to have both of these separate. But most of the time, I just want something pretty fast. So I made a simple script that runs the appropriate bevel depending on what you have selected. So if you select an edge and press B, it runs the edge bevel, and if you select a vertex, press B, it will run the vertex bevel. So it just combines both of those. But when it comes to faces, it actually does something different. Uh, if I select something like this, it's probably because I want to bevel the border and not all of the individual edges. So when you make a face selection, it will automatically convert that to a boundary loop bevel the edges and then go back into face mode. So it does that all very quickly. And someone asked me about that once and how do you do that so fast? So that's how I did it, it's just a script. So I'll select my faces and press B and it does all of it really fast. And uh, 
I like to use that one a lot for uh, screw holes when I'm doing a sub D modeling. So I will extrude this in, press B, shift scroll up, B, B again. So notice how fast it is because it's automatically selecting borders and going back into face mode and all of that. So uh, afterwards I can just control three and then auto smooth and we get a nice looking screw hole that reads pretty well at a distance. There is one problem with my fast bevel, and it's only with faces. So to make it work like I showed you right here, uh, where it's like uh, it keeps jumping to face mode and selecting the board and all of that, I had to sacrifice one thing. So let me remake this very quickly. Okay, and what I sacrificed was um, these options. If I try to change any of these options, it's just going to break. And that's just the nature of... Uh, of the script. I had to sacrifice that to make it work, or I should say make it do exactly what I wanted to do. And there doesn't seem to be any way around it, unfortunately. So if you want to uh, be able to change your bevel settings afterwards, then you can just use a normal bevel instead. So uh, select loops, boundary, control B, and uh, this one will work just fine. By the way, I mapped this little menu that you're seeing right here to the T key. So it's the same one as this. It's bound to F9 by default, which I find really hard to press. So I just bound it to T so I can more easily uh, reach all of these options. And uh, anyway, it's just meant for really fast things. So uh, selecting something like this and maybe this and not having to worry about pressing the right hotkey is, is really nice for uh, simple stuff. Oh yeah, the loop cut. So loop cut is a tool we use to insert edge loops. And by default, you have to press control R and then you need to click and then you need to right click to cancel so that it's placed at the center if that's what you want. So overall, I just feel it's really silly and it pisses me off. So instead I just bound it to C and you only have to click once and there it is, that's it. So uh, I removed one click and bound it to C. That's pretty much the only difference and you can still increase loops and, and slide them. And when you let go, it will automatically be applied. The one problem with loop cut is that it only works on one loop at a time. So sure, we can add multiple edge loops, but I need to do that here. And then I need to do that here. And it takes a while. So I made a connect tool, very similar to what we have in Maya and uh, 3ds Max, but a lot shittier though, because I can't, I can't code. I just look at code and I go blank and it's really funny because it's my own code. <laughs> I don't know how I do anything. Anyway, this is the best I can do. If you select a ring of edges like this and we press shift C, we'll get an edge loop right at the middle. Easy peasy. But I also made it so that you only have to select one edge loop if you want. Shift C. And even better, this is the part that I actually like, is that it works on a selection of face loops. So shift C still works fine. And if you're wondering why I would use this instead of just a regular edge loop, well, this one works with multiple selections at once. So after I press shift C, I can bevel them and add edge loops like that. And then I can just keep modeling normally and doing other stuff. Shift C again, bevel, and just keep going. So I know that there's other ways of inserting edge loops in Blender. You can just use subdivide. The problem with subdivide is that you need to select a ring of edges. And I just much prefer selecting a face loop. So subdivide works like this. You select a face ring, uh, an edge ring, I'm sorry, right click subdivide. And this seems more like what I would actually want from my own connect tool. But like I said, you need to select a ring of uh, edges and then it doesn't give you the, the right selection right off the bat. So you need to uh, uh, shift scroll down. And I don't know, I just much rather shift C bevel and be done with it. Selecting adjacent components also makes a return. Uh, I, usually, I used to make my own script for that, but then I found some useful ones that, that do it better, I think. And they also, uh, place themselves here under select link. And I thought that was handy. So I mostly just use those instead. Alt one, two, and three for uh, each component. So I would do this, Alt E, something like that. And then I would press maybe Alt three for adjacent faces. 
and then maybe bubble those like that. And it's just a, a quick example of something you can do. There, there are much better situations for that. And we also have select hard edges like we did in Maya, but by default, Blender has this tool somewhere here. I think select by trait. I forget where this is. Oh, here it is, select sharp edges. So I bound that to uh, Alt F4. So if you have nothing selected, it will just find all the hard edges. Uh, it's based on angles, by the way. But if you make a selection of your own and you press Alt F4, it will only get the hard edges inside of that selection. And the way I like using all of these is for situations like this. So if I maybe extrude this, then I'll press Alt 2 to get the adjacent edges, and then Alt 4 to get the hard edges only, and then I can bevel, and then we can select these faces, Shift F, grow, bevel again, and then uh, auto smooth. So that's how I like to do that. There's a lot of key presses to be made, but they do come in handy. You can also use select adjacent to create some very quick checker patterns, but Blender already has a checker deselect built in by default, so you might prefer using that. There's also a script for changing the origin to your selection. So if I click on this vertex and uh, set origin to selection, and then go back into object mode, we can see that our origin is now here at this little point. So when we rotate, it will rotate based on that point. And uh, it works on faces as well. I wonder if it would work on multiple faces. I, I didn't test that. Oh, it does, excellent. There's a few other scripts in there that I didn't really mention, and that's just because they, they don't really do that much now. I feel like they can they can be made better, so I'm not really going to cover those. And, um, oh yeah, let's talk about navigation. I don't know if you noticed, but I've been using my navigation. So holding Alt and left click to rotate, middle mouse to pan, and right click to zoom. So I much prefer this type of navigation for uh, poly modeling at least. For sculpting, I prefer something else. But the cool thing is that Blender's navigation is intact as far as I can tell. So middle mouse will still rotate, that's the default, and uh, shift middle mouse pan, control middle mouse, uh, zoom. So we have both Maya and Blender's navigation. I don't know if I might have broken something by doing that, but hopefully I didn't. Oh yeah, selection tools. So uh, by default you press G and you move stuff like that, but I also mapped the move gizmo to W. So we get uh, we get both of them. We can press G or we can use the gizmo to move things more accurately. And if we want to disable the gizmo, we can just press Q to go back to our selection tool. And if we double press Q pretty fast, we'll get our selection pie menu. So uh, we can use select tweak or select lasso, paint select. Lasso, you don't really need this for, uh, uh, you don't need to use the pie menu for this because control right click is the default hotkey, I think. So there it is. But uh, it's very useful, for instance, when you're working with curves. What are the curves? Okay, so uh, I can double press Q, go to tweak, and now I can more easily just place these curves very quickly without having to worry about selecting them first and then tapping on a key. And Q to go back to our normal select tool. Blender also has a way of snapping to different orthographic views, and I'm not talking about the numpad. I forget what the original key mapping was, but I changed it to Alt Shift. So Alt and left click will rotate normally, but if you add Shift to that, we can now snap to different orthographic views very quickly. You know what? I'm also gonna add my mat caps in there. And they're the mat caps I use in ZBrush. So it's this black shiny one, which I really, really like. And we also have this one, which I use for silhouettes. And I like this one because it's not completely black, so I can still see some detail. And we also have this cherry matte cap, which is very, very pretty. And the one I actually like sculpting with ZBrush, I use this one the most, I think. So it's nice to be able to get an idea of what it's going to look like before even sending it over to ZBrush. And I also have this one, which I'm not a big fan of, but here it is, it's like a bronze something. So those will also be in there. 
so I did not cover every single key map or script, but because I'm just using Blender now, more stuff will come. I don't really use Maya anymore, even though I really like it, but it's just missing like two features that I really need. So uh, we're just gonna focus on Blender now, unfortunately. At least it's free, you know? And again, down the link below. And uh, this time, my scripts and my hotkeys are completely independent of each other. So if you hate my hotkeys and you only want the scripts, then that will work just fine. You can map them to your own hotkeys. But whatever you do, Blender does seem to suffer from terrible hotkeys. So just keep that in mind. Okay, bye.